It's no secret that humans are destructive, but among the ones hell-bent on destroying things, there are some who are trying their best to minimize the damage. This is exactly what's going on with the coral reefs today. The 1970s brought with them their decline, but nowadays, some experts are trying to revive them via coral farming at the Abrolhos Islands as well as globally. But will this exercise bear fruit? Let's find out. Starting with, what happened to the corals? There was a time when the clear waters of the Caribbean and Abrolhos Islands were known for their vast coral reef environments and their seabeds rich with underwater sea life. These waters were famed for housing almost one-third of the biodiversity of the region. However, as human activities such as harbor and canal constructions, coral mining, overfishing, or rather destructive fishing, and watershed practices increased, the coral reefs began to decrease. The decline was further steepened as climate change came into play, and waters began to warm up, deregulating the naturally prevalent pH levels of these areas. In response to this, the EPA came up with the Clean Water Act programs. While much research has been taken into the advantages that deliberate aquaculture practices, such as coral farming, could have on coral revival, Fisheries Western Australia has devised its own aquaculture plan for the management of the aqualife in the Abrolhos Islands and surrounding areas. And while the 100-page plan seems rock-solid, we're wondering if it will actually help increase the population of coral, which has, by the way, decreased from half of what we used to have 40 years ago. So, what's the plan? We've already mentioned the reasons for the decline in coral life, but tourism and pollution are two major factors that have contributed to this decrease as well. The Abrolhos Islands are known for their high tourism rates, and you know where there's people, there's trash. No, literally. The current idea is to encourage aquaculture in the surrounding areas that will help in retaining the region's distinctive features while maintaining the conservation and tourism values in place. Now the question is, how does one farm coral? To effectively undertake take this process, a part of a coral colony or free-floating fragments of coral are extracted from the reef and replanted in a nursery which mimics their natural ecosystem. Here they're carefully grown. Once the coral is strong and big enough, they're planted back in the ocean. The adult corals are usually planted in a damaged area to help nurture growth of surrounding corals. As of now, this method has proven successful, and coral farming has been taken up for conservation and commercial uses as well. But it's a lengthy process, and according to the Basile family, family who are active licensed members of the coral community in the Abrolhos Islands, it can take coral seven years to grow to a saleable size. But on the plus side, the Abrolhos Islands are home to many fast-growing species of corals, due to which restoration efforts have yielded results, whereas other areas such as Hawaii houses corals that grow at slower rates and will take 30 to 50 years to restore the colony that was lost. Next, have there been noticeable improvements in coral quantities across the world? Although the pandemic closed down many industries, coral restoration efforts were doubled. The lack of human-generated environment stressors were at a minimum, which gave these products an opportunity to assess the health of coral colonies and collect pieces that had broken to reattach them. Almost 200 colonies, each with a diameter of one or two feet, have been replanted, and there are further plans of reattaching 1,000 to 2,000 more in 2022. Bless these marine biologists. Decades of small-scale scientific research have proven coral farming to be a viable option in the restoration of degraded reefs. But the challenge was the time it took for traditional water-based farming techniques to grow coral sturdy enough to be reintroduced into its natural system. Ultimately, farming was most feasible for species that grew faster. Until recently, coral farming was undertaken in water, but new technologies in this area have allowed for a land-based approach, as was initiated by Coral Vita, a pioneer in its field. According to their company's methods, they utilize new breakthroughs in land-based coral farming such as micro-fragmentation to increase effectiveness and scalability. In the water-based techniques, young coral that is most fragile can't be protected the way they can be on land from boating accidents and differing pH levels due to global warming, leading to higher levels of harvests of coral. However, land and water techniques both have assisted greatly in contributing towards the revitalization of the reef community's health. And now for innovations in coral farming. Additionally, there are innovations in coral farming that have sped up the growth of corals and made them more impervious to the changing nature conditions. Thanks to assisted evolutionary techniques, coral growth can now be accelerated by 50 times their natural state. Experts at Coral Vita imitate various natural habitats to grow all kinds of species of coral for restoration and conservation projects in all regions. It's estimated that by 2050, 90% of the coral reefs will be affected due to thermal stress, which results in coral bleaching, a phenomenon that occurs when the algae that covers the corals and helps in 
and its sustenance is wiped out. In light of these conditions, the new land coral farming techniques have greatly helped. Coral reefs are essential in protecting the coastline from erosion brought on by wave energy and heavy storms. And corals are highly beneficial for the promotion of fish life in the region, and the health and population growth of many species such as urchins and plankton. Techniques such as microfragmentation as applied by Coral Vita help clone coral at unbelievably faster rates, which reduces the restoration timeline from decades to months. Microfragmentation involves breaking coral fragments into tiny pieces to help increase surface area and stimulate tissue growth before being planted into the ocean. Coral Vita's current conservation efforts focus solely on reviving the coral reef colonies to help return what fishermen now call the underwater desert into the thriving rainforest it once was. Evidence also suggests that the fragmentation the coral is put through increases its resilience and increases species and genetic diversity. Coral farmed on land allows coral farmers to mimic the temperature changes and high acidity levels prevailing in natural bodies of water in their farming tanks. This allows newer harvests to adapt to these changes and take them into their stride, leading to higher chances of their survival once they're replanted. So why save corals? To the untrained eye, corals may not seem important, but the benefits they provide are countless. Corals contribute about $10 trillion annually to the global economy, and are a source of food, medicine, and livelihood for many that live near the coast. Apart from the benefits they provide for humans, corals are also a necessity for the continuation and development of healthy underwater ecosystems. They're deeply integrated into the lives of many underwater species, providing protection and food for some fish species and ensuring a control on their populations. The extinction of corals would bring an impact greater than can be imagined, as multiple species of underwater marine life will also be wiped out, and coastlines will be left unprotected during stormy seasons, increasing the risk of flooding. Finally, what more can be done? While coral farming has contributed greatly in the restoration of degraded reefs, we still need to pick up the pace if the goal is conservation. Just farming isn't enough at all, and the Coral Restoration Project needs to have a multi-pronged approach in which everyone plays a part, no matter how big or small it is. Notable success has been achieved on small-scale levels, but the thriving ecosystem of the coral reef that was once abundant still needs to be paid attention to. Many fisheries such as NOAA have initiated coral restoration and conservation programs, backed by plans that outline a framework of do's and don'ts to help protect the corals and allow an environment that promotes growth. Human activities pose a considerable risk to coral reefs, and as one of the areas we can begin to look into and change as required for the betterment of these benthic species. Many unethical fishing practices such as blast fishing need to be stopped altogether to ensure marine life safety and preservation while keeping pollution levels under control. Many of those involved in coral revival also offer tourists an opportunity to play their part in the restoration of reefs, which plays a large part in educating and spreading awareness regarding the maintenance of healthy coral boosting environments. Tourists can plant corals that have reached a certain level back into their underwater gardens, while others can volunteer to clean their habitats. More than anything, it's important to note that humans cause quite a bit of damage to coral reefs without ever realizing it. The Hanauma Bay experienced a regeneration in its coral community in just eight months of the reserve being shut down. While coral farms have definitely helped revive the community in the Abralos Islands, other species of coral require more time and attention. That's a wrap for this video. Would you like to play your part in coral restoration? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!